This episode proudly brought to you by Conqueror Northgate, the Conqueror Midran. It's been an incredible three nights just filling up and then heading out to Baines. I believe it's going to be really picturesque. There's got some amazing baobabs there, so looking forward to it. Welcome to Botswana. We're doing something a little bit different. Hey guys, how awesome is this? We are back. As part two of this series and having already driven a total of 1060 kilometers for part one of this adventure, we prepare to leave South Camp in Naya Pans and travel towards the iconic Baines Baobab. This trip, marked on Tracks for Africa, is a 38 kilometer trip to campsite number three. When towing, give yourself a good three to four hours to do this one. With the occasional stops en route, we arrived at our campsite just after three in the afternoon. For the remainder of our trip, we headed out of the Naya Pan Reserve and aimed for Gweta. On account of no fuel, we carried onwards to Nata and stayed over at Elephant Sands for the night. From Elephant Sands to Tumaka campsite in the Makarikari National Reserve is a 257 km trip, with majority of it being on the tar road. However, the 32 km stretch from the entry gate to the campsite is thick sand, so give yourself 5 hours to make this trip. The end of our trip saw us travelling back to Kamarina Sanctuary and then back to South Africa. Enjoy this, the final part of our adventure. This is what we got up to. A bit of advice when towing your trailer, guys. Take it easy on the road, on the entry from, uh, on the entry to Nyapan to South Camp, and from South Camp to Baines Baobab. Guys, drive or tow your trailer with the utmost of caution in mind. Remember, you're pulling anywhere from one ton to 1.4 tons when fully loaded and with water. It's a heavy workout on the trailer and more importantly on both tire and suspension so do your morning checks before you start towing just stop to uh, check the trailers it's uh, always a good idea to stop every half an hour or so um, check the shocks that they're not overheating and just generally do a walk around and see that anything has got loose or the lights Travelling on the western road is the easier going route towards Bain Baobabs and I'd recommend it if towing off-road trailers. However, at the turn-off mark, choose the route marked 14 kilometers as it is more favourable to smoother towing. Enjoy the wide open spaces, your journey is magic and the roads give you a feeling of overlanding bliss and isolation.
Arriving at campsite number three, and with a storm on the horizon, we set up camp in what must be one of the best locations on the Naya Pan. You've caught me busy putting up my tent, but what's happened today, sorry Chris, is we left South Camp at about half past ten, and we drove through to Baines Bad Bad, and it's absolutely amazing. And the storm has just passed us. Thank goodness it didn't hit us. It's like drilling into rock here. I think I'm finding diamonds here in Botswana. I'm sure I'll break through any minute now. Just gotta get through that. There we go. Clay. It's hard ancient clay here. So we pulled into campsite number three at Baines Baobab. We are literally underneath a baobab tree. It was a long drive. Sure, what an absolute day. The drive was quite hectic, just a lot of ruts and when towing the trailer, the best thing is to travel at low speeds. As we prep up some dinner, we relax around the fire and reflect on a hard day's drive and our trip thus far. Simply put, magic moments as we listen to the night sounds and soak it all up. We've got a pretty cool shower set up here. Let me just show you the toilets. Here's the toilets and here is the shower. That was a good shower, very good shower. And I hear the rain coming and there's some awesome thunderstorms. And if it does rain, hopefully it's for only like half an hour because I think any more than that and we'll have trouble on the pans. My turn to cook tonight. I've got a deboned leg of lamb poiki. The reason why it's deboned is it's easier and it's what they had available. So I am browning the onions right now. Then I'm gonna add the deboned leg of lamb in here, brown it on both sides to keep the flavor inside at quite a high heat. And then what I do is I turn the heat down, add a bit of red wine, lamb stock, and then all the other spices and ingredients like tomatoes come in afterwards. So yeah, um, I thought the pads were gonna be solid all the way through. I mean, it looks like this section hasn't had much rain, but yeah, it can be very deceiving. So I think when driving on the salt flats or any salt pan, just be very, very mindful that certain patches can have water. You just break through the top crust and it is down we go. So luckily I didn't have to engage full low or anything like that. And yeah, got out and it seems to be all right. We could keep going, but I just don't want to chance it. It feels absolutely solid, but look, just broke through the crust. So I mean, yeah, and these are tracks, right? It's not like it's just virgin yeah. soil. These are previous tracks, but obviously it still breaks through. It's time to fill up with fuel. Been driving around now on one tank from the time we left Mopipi. So it's quite some distance. I think it's about 620 kilometers that we've done on the range, a single tank. So the plan now is to use the jerry cans on the top. Let's lighten the load and um, the rest of the journey, I don't have to worry about such things. There ain't no dust like uh, the Makhari Khari salt pans dust. It gets everywhere. Now we wait, we've got three, 20, 20, 20, and that one's empty, so 60 liters altogether, taking me up to a hopefully three quarters tank full.
we've just done a little drive out of our campsite and the sun has set and it was an amazing sunset really nice to see how clear and cool the skies are after a nice little shower a little bit of rain fell not much but the storm dodged us so the skies are just super clear and clean and the sunset was so golden but exciting news is I've switched on my steadies I have the X Pro steady lights and this is the second time I've switched them on it's still dusk so you can't really see the full stretch of the lights themselves but just based on what I'm seeing very very bright so they seem to be the business I'm going to try and switch them on when it goes dark so you guys can have a look see this is a light for you I just want to show you what these lights look like. The Steadies Type X Pro, they're, they're phenomenal in my mind's eye. The Type X Pro Steady Spotlights are a 9 inch spotlight that kicks out an impressive 1.15 km beam of high lumen white light. They have interchangeable front covers and side trims to suit any vehicle, whilst also adding a layer of good protection. 37 Oslon high flux LEDs per spotlight at a very competitive price makes these our preferred choice of quality spotlights. So I'll show you. So this, that just what you see there now, that there is just the headlights. Switch them on, Ed. So now you can't see this in the footage, but there's a baobab tree right at the back. I reckon that's 800 meters at the moment that you can fully see within the light. And the baobab tree in the back, I reckon about a kilometer. So they really have, they really have good, good, good reach. Visit their website, links in right up below. In central Botswana, we're at Rayapan, and this is what we came here for. Absolutely amazing open spaces, the scenery are fantastic. We're at Baines Baobab currently, and we stayed at Campsite 3 from the Kaume group, and it was fantastic. I mean, we slept and stayed underneath this massive um, Baobab, one of Africa's giants, and what a privilege! What an absolute privilege! not only the location and camping out there for three days but we did it with a compact platinum 2 trailer from conqueror northgate and conqueror midrand and with good mates uh, so yeah we've just had a really good time but the significance of this trip for me is that i did this trip with my dad when i was between the ages of 9 and 11 years old and I remember climbing these trees and exploring at Baines Baobab way back then and yeah it just has such a surreal feeling and all these emotions come back so yeah I think if anything I just want to thank my dad for instilling this adventurous spirit within me because uh, I think it's through upbringing that I want to go out and adventure and bring you along with me and show you guys what works and what doesn't work and more importantly our trip so that you can plan your trips going forward I think it'll make it a hell of a lot easier and yeah there's some really really special places in southern Africa that I think you know we will continue to explore and adventure and show you and bring you um, so yeah so just great to be here Baines Baobab has obviously changed throughout the years since I was last year with my dad we camped right in underneath the Baines Baobabs back then it wasn't as formal a setting as it is now it's a little bit fenced off 
and you're not allowed to bring your vehicles up onto the Baines Baobab Island as it were just to obviously preserve and look after this iconic place it really is something special and i hope we've done justice in the visuals look guys we're having an absolutely fantastic trip from here on out we go to gueta we will fill up the we'll put air back into the tires go to gueta fill up with fuel and then make the trip through to Kumaha camp in the Maharihari Pans National Reserve. Now I've been through the Maharihari Pans, but I've never been to the National Reserve. And I've and I haven't seen or been able to find too much out there on the Kumaha campsite. So what I do know and what I have seen is from another mate of ours, Roland Rao from My Life in Africa. He's done a couple of trips out there. So thank you, Roland for inspiring us to go out there and do the same thing hopefully guys you enjoy this and we inspire you to go out and have your next adventure so yeah it's it's we're fortunate in the fact that we made this our yearly holiday so that budget's going obviously left Baines Baobab this morning and we left a little bit late and what's happened now is we drove to Guetta to try and fill up on fuel we got to Guetta and unfortunately the petrol pump is not functional what we're planning on doing now is we're going to shoot to Nata which is 70 kilometers away uh, and then what we're going to do is go from Nata and do a temporary sleepover at Elephant Sands Lodge. He's the bird guru. So we're having this little competition to see who can find the Birchall's lurie. It's a very new species of lurie. Found only through my eyes. And when you find this thing, it stops. So I have to explain what happened. He called me, he was in the Kruger at Nguenya Lodge. And he called me and said he'd sighted a Birchall's lurie. And I know all the luries. There's no such thing as a Birchall's lurie. Uh, I'm sure it was a purple crested luri and he was he was adamant that it was a Birchall's luri even got his wife to check the book they couldn't find a Birchall's luri he admitted it was a purple crested it was a purple crested luri <laughs> so for any of you that are wanting to come on adventures with 4x4 ventures please take me as the bird guide do not take guide. his please do not take his advice we've just got to we did a slow drive from elephant sands this morning we left at half past nine we've just got here now it's half past 11 uh, to Makhari Khari Pans National Reserve entry gate we've just paid for park fees uh, for the three of us and then for the vehicles which amounts to quite a bit actually um, so it's 120 pula per person per day for park fees and it's 50 pula per vehicle per day. The roads are thick sand, 4x4 must be engaged. I am in 4x4 high, second gear and just cruising along, always towing at 22 kilometers an hour.
putting the tongs on these rocks. We're having bright butternut and there's a lot of bugs so butternut, bright butternut, some big boys, Texan steaks here and some bright potato and the butternut is quite done eh? Sure. Right, so morning of day 10 and we are nearing the end of our epic Botswana overlanding trip. We're at the Makarikari Pans National Reserve, Kumacha campsite. And yeah, we've got a really, really nice campsite set underneath a camel thorn, otherwise known as a Mokoto tree in the Sotswana language. It's a beautiful place. It's right along the Boteti River. Busy packing up. We've got some little monkeys running through the campsite. This morning we're going to go out for a game drive a little bit later on. I'm doing a poiki for the guys. So we're leaving the campsite here at Kumacha. It's around 9 o'clock in the morning. We had a lacquer chilled morning, some nice coffee. And we're heading to a campsite called Nkuka Hills. It's about 27 kilometers from here. We're going to go and check that side of the Makhari Khari Pans out. As far, as far as I know, we have to drive along the pans to get there. Not entirely sure. But let's see a different part of this reserve. So just waiting for the guys and then we're heading out. It's such a pity to be at such a uh, beautiful location and have cattle and donkeys walking through <laughs> camp. I'm not a big fan of it. As long as I let you guys know that that's what you can expect when you come to the Makarikari Reserve Kumaka campsite in the January summer period, then that's what it'll be. So we went to the Njuka uh, campsite, uh, I was very disappointed to be honest. The road there is really bad, there's only one road there in the back, so it's not like uh, you can take the scenic route. Uh, not a lot on the route, it's horribly corrugated and the campsite yeah, is in, literally in the middle of nowhere with nothing around it. So if you're looking for real solitude I suppose you can consider it, but I definitely don't recommend it. Prepping to go on a game drive, we reposition the poi key pot as it continues to simmer away on low heat. I reposition the Flexo Power 105 watt solar panels for optimum charge, a product that I give a definite thumbs up for. What have you thought about the Flexo Power panels? Man, I couldn't do without them, dude. It's charging when it works, it's fantastic. It's got to make sure on your solar regulator, it really does help. What are you saying about that game drive, dude? Hey man, it was amazing, eh? Sure. 
you know, um, as they say, all good things must come to an end. We've got one more night at Karma Rhino Sanctuary. But man, it was quite spectacular. Something else along the Boteti River it was fantastic. I mean, sun was setting. We had elephants, giraffes, kudu, hippos, abdon stalks. I mean, it was just like a painting. So nice storm clouds in the background it was fantastic. Kind of leaves an impression on one's soul, which is what I keep saying to everyone when the Botswana fever bites. Man, it's a bug you. Well, it, it, yeah, it leads you to your next adventure so we're gonna chow some poiki tonight and then um, yeah get ready for the last leg of the trip Ryan says we're spending one, one more night at SKL Kumaka Camp. Man, I've got to find my wife. I spoke to her last night. She's missing me and I'm missing them. I could do another night definitely but man we'll see what the Minister of Finance has to say. What better way to end off a great day in Africa than to sit around the campfire and get a special visit from these courting burrow eagle owls. Sometimes it's not always about the predators and even though we didn't see the cats, this was a moment we surely won't forget. Waking up early in the morning to begin our trip to Kamarana Sanctuary, we begin to pack up our trusty off-road trailers. As always, be mindful to find the unexpected critters, especially the poisonous kind. This scorpion, known as the Parabuthus transvalicus, is very poisonous and could land you in trouble. Take care and always be cautious around campsites. So another awesome morning wake up. This morning is our second last morning in Botswana. We packed up tents and trailers fairly early. We got up at about five, half past five thereabouts and began the process of tearing down the trailers, which is getting easier, if I might add. What's quite strange is that it's taken me 10 days to figure out all the little quirks and nuances of putting up the compact platinum 2 i think i've come to terms with it now and now we're heading to karma rhino sanctuary for our last night in botswana The Conqueror Compact Platinum off-road trailer surprised me in every way. As a light and small trailer, it packs a punch. Offering ample shade on the hottest of days, it became a center point. A true base camp in every sense. The 80-liter Snowmaster fridge is perfect for those long trips and to be honest, does an excellent job at keeping meat frozen and drinks cool. Very capable when off-roading, as a testament to great balance, its lightweight and added creature comforts. It is a tough little off-road trailer that sports a 2.5 ton solid beam axle with eye-to-eye -eye shackle leaf springs. The interior is spacious and comfortable, suitable for two, but with the optional add-on room, is ideal for a family of four, very easily. With a 29 minute setup time, easy towing, massive awning footprint and insane storage space, this is one fantastic little off-road trailer that can surely suit all your needs. Enough space for two people for 10 days. So here we are at Kamarana Sanctuary on day 12. Tomorrow we leave for South Africa which is bittersweet. Tell you what, if you guys know anything about Botswana, it really leaves a feverish, almost impulsive desire to stay. And I think that kind of summarizes the whole trip really. We're here at Kama, we're at the pan, and we've just had Rhino walk 10 meters from us. 
It's been an absolutely epic trip with good mates, good times, and a lot of true overlanding journeys. I've come to learn that overlanding is not necessarily about the destination, but about the journey and who you share it with. What a privilege to be able to share it with Ed and Chris. Guys, as always, go and have a look at their channels. Support them. It's the only way we get our message out there and we really appreciate it. To those of you we met along route, so awesome to meet you and really fantastic to find out that you enjoy what we're doing. As always guys, stay tuned for the next one. Keep safe, keep trucking and we'll see you at the next one. Cheers for now. In that Mapungupue video of mine, that's me in the background drinking coffee and you've got the fire going in the front. What about that one at, um, is that one where the elephants came through? Rotu, yeah, Rotu. that was from the back. Oh, that was from the back.